If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, then say, praise be to God. Be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen.
Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. For today, God brought you here to serve him and praise him on this beautiful, beautiful Palm Sunday. We have so much to be thankful for. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing as we continue to worship our Lord and Savior by singing holy, holy, holy.
but for having a God who loves us. He loves us. And we have to be thankful. Amen. Amen. Holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Lord. Every person of us and us. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of the donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace of the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearer and the readers of his holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. You are so great and mighty, you are my heart's desire, you are my strength and power, you are an awesome God, you are my redeemer, you are a loving Savior, you Father, for you 
are worthy of all our praise. And we say thank you, Lord. There's so much, Heavenly Father, going on in our lives, Lord, but we come today to give you the glory, the honor. We come to give you the praise. We come to magnify your holy name, Lord Jesus, because there's none like you, Lord. None like you. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing power. We thank you for saving power. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord, that you see fit to give us each and every day of our lives. And for that, we are grateful. Grateful, Lord Jesus, grateful. For we know that the resurrection, you can re resurrect all things, Heavenly Father. We know and we trust and we believe in you for the good times and the bad times. For we know that you can restore and you can heal and you can mend the broken hearts, Lord Jesus. And we say thank you. Blot out our transgressions, Lord. Create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit in each and every one of us, Heavenly Father, that we will be what you called us to be, Heavenly Father. Cleanse us right now, Lord Jesus. Cleanse us. And we will give you the glory. And we say thank you, Lord. There's so much to be grateful, Lord Jesus, that you kept us. When our backs were against the wall, you saved us, Lord Jesus. You made a way. And we say thank you, Lord, for that, Heavenly Father, because you've never left us nor forsake us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you. We thank you for keeping us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your protection, Lord Jesus, because some have answered the call on the Most High, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for we are part of the living, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. My God is so grateful, Lord Jesus, because you made a way. You made a way out of no way, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. For a wretch like me, Lord Jesus. Continue to keep us, Lord Jesus. Continue to build us up, Lord Jesus, for your of building up your kingdom, Lord Jesus, that we will be able to win disciples for your kingdom, Lord Jesus. We know that you are in the midst of everything that we're doing, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the building that shall be built on broad and great, we Heavenly Father, that souls will be saved in that church, Lord Jesus. We thank you right now. We're claiming it, Lord Jesus that it will be your kingdom, Heavenly Father, here on earth. Bless the shepherd of this flock, Lord Jesus. Bless the leader of this church, Heavenly Father. Continue to strengthen our pastor, Reverend Elvin Clayton, Lord Jesus. Continue to fill him up, Lord Jesus, where he is weak, Heavenly Father, give him strength. Where it is illness, we ask for healing. And we just say thank you, Lord, for his presence, his teaching, and his ministry in each and every one of our lives, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our first lady, Lord Jesus, that she stands in the vineyard, ushering in for your people, Lord Jesus, locally, on a district level, and connectional, Lord Jesus, and globally, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for her dedication and her obedience, Lord Jesus. Bless Reverend Rogers, the clergy, Heavenly Father. Bless us, Lord Jesus, as we continue to do your blessed will. We thank you for this music ministry that you've given unto us, Lord Jesus. The melodies, sweet melodies to our hearts, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for the media team, Heavenly Father, that they can broadcast it, that everyone can see and hear your message today, Lord Jesus. Bless each and every one that's under the sound of my voice, Heavenly Father. Touch us right now, Lord Jesus, from the head to the toes of our feet, Lord Jesus, that we will receive a fresh anointing 
let it fall fresh upon us, Lord Jesus, that we will mount up like an eagle and soar, Heavenly Father, that the people can see your good works in us, Lord Jesus. Bless this country. Bless this nation. Bless the families that have lost their loved ones to the violence, Lord Jesus. Let your peace ascend upon us today, Lord Jesus. For we need your peace, Heavenly Father, more than ever. Let it abide in each and every one of us that we can show the love for our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
almighty and everlasting God, speak to us. Speak to every single one of us individually and collectively. Speak to our inner person. Give us listening ears. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Luke chapter number 19, beginning at verse 29. As he approached Bethage and Bethany at the hill called Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead of him went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the coat, the owners asked them, Why are you untying the coat? They replied, The Lord needs it. I want to go a little further with that text. Verse 35 says, Then they brought it to Jesus. And they threw their cloaks on the coat and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to joyfully praise God in a loud voice for all the things they had seen and heard. Are y'all still here? Uh, yeah. They praised God in a loud voice for the miracles they had seen. Sometimes people don't understand when you shout out because they don't know like you know what the Lord has done for you. So I want to talk from this thought this morning. Jesus has been so good. What did I say? Oh, yes. Jesus has been so good. They said, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They were saying, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And, and running through this text, uh, there was no doubt when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, and he had come with purpose, you ought not just do something to be doing it. And Jesus wasn't one of those people that, that just did things to be doing it. He had a purpose and a reason for doing everything that he did. But what was that purpose? And why did he ride a donkey and not a horse? Jesus' transportation choice showed that, number one, 
He is Jesus the King. <laughs> Not just any king. Jesus the King. And Jesus came as a king of peace. Are you still here? But remember this point. Jesus was not the king that the people wanted. <laughs> Are you still here? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been in a position and people got you, but they really were looking for something else? Yeah, yeah. Another personality? Yeah. Another purpose? In Jesus, they didn't get what they were looking for. But by riding on a donkey, specifically a colt, Jesus was declaring his role as king. And Reverend William read earlier in Zechariah chapter number 9, it tells us, they said, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion, shout, daughter Jerusalem, see your king comes to you. Righteous, victorious, lowly, riding on a donkey. On a coat of a fire. This is the Pacific prophecy that the Jewish people would remember as they were waiting for the coming Messiah. Are y'all still here? The significance of the donkey is the donkey was a royal steed in the Old Testament. The king rode on a donkey, and that's important my brothers and sisters, not a horse because he'd have to be a conqueror, but because he was in charge. And whether you know it, Jesus is always in charge. He rode in on a donkey. Donkeys were portrayed in scripture as symbols of service. What did he say? I, I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. Humility, suffering and peace Therefore, riding a donkey symbolized the arrival of peace. Riding a horse would have symbolized war, but Jesus was declaring peace by riding the coat. Jesus was essentially saying, yes, I am your king. The time you've been waiting for have arrived, but things aren't going to happen as you expect, the people welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday expected him to bring peace to their circumstances through a military victory over the Romans. But Jesus came to bring peace between human beings and God. Are y'all still here? The road, the Jesus rode a donkey because he's our king of peace in this world, in a world that definitely needs him. We need the peace of Jesus in our hearts. We need the peace of Jesus in our situations. So our text says in that 37th verse, when he, when he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully praising God in a loud voice for the miracles they had seen. Saying, blessed be the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I wondered, I wondered, I wondered, I wondered how could they worship and praise God in this manner and a few days later the, the master would be crucified. I, I wondered that. Perhaps because they didn't know. And it wasn't because he didn't tell them. He, he spoke about his death. He, he said, I will be handed over to sinful men. I, I will be crucified and on the third day I would rise from the dead. But that was far from their mind. So, in their minds, they didn't know. They didn't know that he would be betrayed by one of his friends. They didn't know he would be handed over by sinful men. They didn't know he would be unjustly tried in their court system. 
They didn't know he would be stripped of his clothing. They didn't know he would have to carry his own cross. They didn't know that it would be hung between two thieves. What they did know is that what they had heard and what they had seen. Huh. That they know, they knew, they knew that Jesus had been good to them. You, you think about it. That, that, that he changed water into wine on the third day of a wedding that took place in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and the disciples had been invited to this wedding as well. And when the wine had ran out, the Lord's mother said to him, they don't have any more wine. Jesus said, woman, why are you putting me in this? You know, you mothers always button in your children's business. Always putting them in something. Y'all knew I'm talking right. <laughs> I don't know why, but they always got your children or putting them in something. And Jesus said, my hour has not yet come. His mother paid no mind, no attention to what he said. He just, she looked at the servant and said, whatever he tells you to do, go on and do it. Nearby, there were six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for washing or ceremonial washing or washing their feet, each hole from 20 to 30 gallons. I wonder was this some kind of joke that Jesus was playing on these guys. Have you ever tried to lift up just two gallons of water? If, if at the lower end, if the water pots held 20 gallons, that's 166 pounds. Are you still here? I mean, 100, yeah, 166 pounds. And he, he said, he told us, go fill the jars of water. So they went and filled them up to the brim. They had to carry them. How many of y'all can carry 166 pounds any distance at all? Think about it. You don't have anything balanced? It's water! Are you still here? Then he told them to draw some out and give it to the master of the banquet. So, so they did that, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had, that had been turned to wine. He did not realize where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water, they knew what was going on. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the good wine first, but you have saved the best to last. Are you still here? <laughs> that really was the best. Water pots were used for washing feet. Water cleanses. Water removes dust and dirt. But wine represents the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. I tell you, that was the best. Are you still here? I can hear the father of the bride sing. I don't know if he was in the crowd, but he could have been there. I can hear him saying, Jesus have been so good to me. The centurion in Matthew 8, round verse 5, Jesus had entered Capernaum. Capernaum. And, and the centurion came and asked for help. He said, he said, Lord, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering greatly. He's in, some, in a terrible situation. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion said, Lord, I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. 
I, I, listen, I, I got issues. I, I'm a man of authority. And when you have authority over people, the, you know, you have them doing things that they probably shouldn't do. I, I'm really, really, I'm a sinful man. Don't come in my house, but just say the word. Just say the word. Jesus heard this. He was so amazed. And he said to those follow him, I have not found anyone with this kind of faith, not even in Israel. Then the centurion said, go, let it be done as you believed. And the Bible says, in the same hour, the same moment, the servant was healed. Are you still here? I can hear that centurion saying, oh, oh, Jesus has been so good to me. Are you still listening? Jesus restores a demon-possessed man, the Bible tells us. When they went across the lake of the region of the generals, the, the, when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an unclean and unpure spirit came from the tombs to meet the Lord. This man lived in the tombs. Did y'all hear that? He lived in the cemetery. And no one could bind him anymore. Not even with chains. For he had often been chained at his hands and by his feet, but he broke the chains apart. Are you still here? No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out. He would cut himself with stone. There was something wrong with him. He had the wrong stuff inside of him. When he saw Jesus, from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me? I, I found that strange. He ran to Jesus. You hear me? And he fell on his knees. He said, Jesus, son of the most high God, in God's name, do not torment me. But Jesus said to him, come out of the man, you impure spirit. Uh -huh. Then Jesus asked him, what's your name? He said, he said, he said, my name is Legion because we are many. We are many. There are many evil things in him. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still here? Yeah. And he begged again to do not send me out of the area. But there was a large herd of pigs who was feeding nearby the hillside. And the demon begged Jesus to send those him, them into the pigs, allow us to go into them. Let that happen. Let that happen. And he came. He gave them permission. And the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd was about 2,000 pigs. Good God from Zion. And the Bible says they rushed down the steep hill and they were drowned in the lake. Those who were attending the pigs ran off and reported this to the town and countryside. And the people who went out to see what had happened when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed with these legions of demons. He was sitting there with his clothes on. He was dressed. He was in his right mind. Are you still listening to me? Oh, bless his name. And then the people were afraid. Those, those who had been, who had seen it, they told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and, and told what happened to the pigs. Then the people began to spread this news about Jesus 
And the strangest thing, they wanted him to leave their region. Now, you, he got rid of the devil. This man who was harmful to himself and to other people, he cast the demons out, but they wanted him to leave the region. Oh, praise his name. I would imagine, and I could almost hear that man this morning, saying, I don't know about the rest of those folks, but Jesus has been so good to me. Are you still here? But Jesus did so many things. He healed so many people with diseases. He, he, he made about so many changes in the lives of people he came in contact with. The Bible tells that he healed a paralyzed man. He healed the man who had a withered hand. He healed the blind man. He raised the widow's son. Down the hill in the funeral profession, he just said, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it right there. And he touched the casket and gave the boy back to his mother. I, I could see the happiness and the joy. Uh, he fed 5,000 men along with the women and the children. He calmed the storms. Have you ever calmed the storm in your life? All that's going on in the world, all that's happening in family, all that's happening with employment, and somehow it, it's a raging storm and God can bring peace. Glory to God. Well, let me tell you this. Everything I have, Everything I own, everything I hope to be, all, all that I all that I want to be, all that this God that I serve, all that He done, all, all I can tell you, He done so much for me. I, I, I can't talk for you, but I can tell you. That he's been so good to me. Are you still here? Have he been good to you? I said, have he been good to you? Have he opened doors for you? Have you ever been sick? Have you ever healed your body? Have he been good to you? Did he wake you up this morning? Have he started you on your way? Has the Lord been good to you? On this Palm Sunday morning, you need to shout with a loud voice. Don't be ashamed. Wave your palms in the air and say, Lord, the Lord has made. 
Do you love him today? Do you worship him today? Why don't somebody say yes? Yes! Somebody say glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God in the highest! Praise his name! Thank you, Lord! I dare you to say thank you, Lord! I dare you to say thank you, Lord! I dare you, I don't dare you to say thank you, Lord! For the great things you have done! Ain't nobody like Jesus! Ain't nobody like our God! Not only worship Him today, but praise Him! Somebody say glory to his name. Glory to his name. Is anyone in 
a house that is without a church home, our doors are open. We extend our hand and our hearts to you. Receive it now. The doors are open in Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. Bring it up.